Today we're talking about eye joists and eye beams. First part, we're going to understand the engineering secrets behind the eye-shaped beams. Second part, we're going to look at different ways we can use eye joists. And just to give you a hint, it's not only for floor frame. And lastly, we're going to discuss the reasons why we should be exploring more of these options. So let's get started. Imagine this, you're building a house with a traditional floor framing made of joists and bearers. And a joist is nothing more than a beam that spans between supports and carry vertical loads from self-weight, people walking, house furniture, and maybe other walls above. Beams are usually subject to bending and shear. And when it comes to eye joists, the shear stresses are carried by the web. The bending moment will result in compression and tension stress is carried by the flanges and the eye joist is made from a combination of timber products so it makes sense to have a timber product with good shear properties at the web and a timber product with high tension and compression strength at the flanges in this case the flanges are made of LVL and the web is made of OSB this engineering concept isn't new at all we've been using steel eye shaped beams for nearly 200 years and the reason this shape is highly efficient is because it has most of the material located further away from the neutral axis of the beam let me give you a real life example if i try to bend this ruler it's super hard i can't do it now if i rotate this ruler 90 degrees on its flat it becomes super easy so why the same ruler with same material same cross-sectional area same centroid location have different bending and deflection capacity and the answer for that lies in a geometrical property called second moment of area or area moment of inertia and without going into too much detail the more area or mass you have further away from the neutral axis the better the section will be resisting bending so the neutral axis for this ruler is here and we have material further away from it on the other hand for the ruler on its flat the neutral axis it's still the same however we don't have material further away from it and the eye beam does this job very well the materials are distributed in a very efficient manner so for the engineers watching us we know that bending stress equals moment times distance to the neutral axis divided by the moment of inertia in other words the higher the moment of inertia of the section of the beam the smaller its bending stress and as i said before the way you achieve a high moment of inertia is by placing material as far away from the neutral axis as practical which is exactly what an eye-shaped beam does and the same principle applies to deflection formulas of a beam which always have the moment of inertia in the denominator of the equation as well therefore again the higher the moment of inertia the smaller the deflection we talked about floor framing what about roof framing well it works exactly the same a traditional roof framing is made of rafters and roof beams and again like the joists a rafter is nothing more than a beam that carries roof and wind loads so the same engineering principles apply and we can also efficiently use eye joists for roof rafters what about lintels and studs why not lintels are beams and studs are structural elements of the wall framing and they work as a beam to carry the horizontal loads from wind and as a column to carry the vertical loads in fact eye joists in wall framing are pretty popular in quite a few countries around the world but I know what you're thinking and I understand the specific requirements when using eye joists as rafters or lintels or even studs there are quite a few complications that need to be explored for example a stud wall is usually 70 or 90 millimeters thick the minimum standard eye joist depth is 200 millimeters therefore if you're using eye joists as studs that means your wall would be 200 thick minimum which could potentially work for high walls or if you are after better insulation and the second point is the connection between studs to the top and bottom plates and also the jump studs on each side of openings those are details that require a little bit more input from the designer what about using them as lintels again standard eye joists are minimum 200 dip therefore you will have to ensure enough room above 
above the opening and when it comes to tie down and the connection to the jump studs we will require more input from the designer not to mention that if you have a concentrated load you might require a web stiffener and using eye joists for roof framing requires some detailing around overhangs some extra blockings and stiffeners and some input from the designer at box gutter rebate details the idea i want to convey is that in times of shortage like we've been through over the past two years in australia we can and should use our creativity to adapt to these sorts of scenarios and not to mention that i joists are 50 percent lighter than its equivalent solid timber section and that means less materials utilized more trees saved and a more sustainable industry it's a win-win situation and finally if i joists are still not your cup of tea we can and should strive to develop more efficient and smarter construction products and ensure that all industry does not fall behind and that's it for today folks if you want to learn more about the most common house construction systems in australia watch this video next and i'll see you there